Hey YouTube, this is an advanced tutorial on hardware implementation of one wire interface of DHD22 with two timer and two DMA channel of STM32F103C8. This MCU does not have a dedicated peripheral for one wire interface, but you can implement it with timer and DMA. DHD22 pin 1 is VCC, which is 3.3 to 5.5. Pin 2 is data pin, which is pulled up with 1K resistor and can't be connected to VCC by MCU or sensor. Pin 4 connect to bully pill ground. To initiate reading temperature and humidity, MCU has to connect data pin to ground for at least 1 millisecond. Then MCU has to release the bus. After that, sensor gonna connect the bus to GND and then releasing it. This is sensor start pulse. Then sensor sends 40 pulse that represent 40 bits that consist of 16 bit of humidity, 16 bit of temperature and 8 bit of checksum. Most significant bit is sent first and sampling period is at least 2 seconds. Whether a bit is 1 or 0 is determined with the pulse on time. If on time is 70 microsecond, bit is 1. If it's 26 to 28 microsecond, bit is 0. Before I talk about the plan, I want to tell you what will you find in other YouTube videos on interfacing DHT22 with STM32. Lots of time you see tutorials on interfacing devices with STM32, it is just modified Arduino codes. This part of code is responsible for MCU init pulse. At the start, pin is set to output, then pin status is changed to ground, then we have a delay, after that pin is set to 1, another delay, and after that pin is set to input configuration. This is called software implementation. When you're doing software implementation for doing anything, you have to write code which CPU has to run. For receiving 40 bits, there is a similar code. In this method, CPU is busy from start start to finish and can't do anything else. This is very problematic when MCU has lots of things to do. This is a hobbyist method and it's not suitable for real world application. Alternative approach is using great capabilities of timer and DMA in STM32. I'm gonna do this project three times. In final method, at the end of each measurement, there is just one interrupt and it's all the CPU load we have with this method. Timer and DMA are going to take care of everything. In first hardware implementation method, I'm using timer 3 to generate an interrupt every 3 seconds, which is the sampling period. It should be at least 2, I did 3. In timer 3 update callback function, I start timer 4 in OPM mode, one pulse mode. It means after timer 4 counter overflowed one time, it's stopped. Timer 4 channel 3 is connected to sensor data pin and it's configured in alternate function open drain mode. It should never be in push pull mode because MCU should not be able to connect data pin to VCC. Channel 3 is in PWM mode and it's responsible for generating MCU start pulse. To measure on time for 40 pulses, I am using timer for channel 1 and 2. Both of them are connected to channel 1 input, which is connected to sensor data pin. In rising edges, CNT value is captured in CCR1 and in falling edges in CCR2. Interrupt for CCR1 is activated. It means whenever there is a falling edge, there is also an interrupt. CCR1 and CCR2 registers value is collected in CCR1 callback function. Next step is ARR and PSC calculation for timer 4. First, I have to decide values for two parameters, counter period and CNT clock period. Then calculate ARR and PSC registers value with these two functions. Counter period is 1 plus ARR times CNT clock period. Period of CNT clock is duration of one step. Duration of one step times number of steps is the clock period, the green thing. This is formula for calculating ARR register. Second formula is frequency of CNT clock is frequency of PSC clock divided by 1 plus PSC. This is PSC clock and this is CNT clock. And prescaler clock frequency is 72 MHz. It's internal clock. And frequency of CNT clock is 1 divided by period of CNT clock. So prescaler register value is 72 MHz times period of CNT clock minus 1. Each time timer 4 starts counting, a sampling starts. I want a measurement which consists of MCU start pulse and sensor start pulse and 40 bits of data to fit in a one timer 4 cycle. So timer 4 period should be bigger than one measurement maximum time. 
and one measurement maximum time is host pull load time which should be one millisecond minimum and I do five milliseconds so five millisecond plus this is 40 microsecond plus 80 microsecond for sensor pulls low time 80 microsecond sensor pulls up and there are 40 pulses for 40 bits because I want to calculate maximum measurement time all bits are considered one so the on time is 70 microsecond and 50 microsecond for low time result is 10 millisecond and counter period should be bigger than this next question is what should be the value for CNT clock period this is the smallest time we're going to be able to measure with this timer so the smaller the better but I'm not gonna choose the smallest value I want it to be one microsecond because sensor on time is 70 or 26 to 28 microsecond and one microsecond is good enough resolution to measure this range in the first formula I put maximum value for ARR because I don't have a max limit for counter period so counter period is 65 millisecond which is bigger than 10 millisecond with the second formula for CNT clock period to be one microsecond PSC register value should be 71 this is the starting point there's a project named DHT22, it has CMCs. In each system init function, priority grouping is set. Cystic is configured. Cystic priority is set. Power and AFIO peripheral are enabled. And this is configuration for pin PO13 and pin PO14. And in X clock init function, clock is set to 72 MHz. Right click on lib folder, click new file name it dht22.c another time right click new file dht22.h in dht22.h add include general.h general.h is just cmc's it header file and system header file add dht22 inclusion in dht22.c and in main.c in dht22.h add hash pragma once in dht22.c write the function with return type of void i name it dht22 init input argument is void first step is gpio configuration pin pb8 is timer 4 channel 3 and pin pb6 is timer 4 channel 1 and this is with no remap as you can see here timer 4 remap bits when we have no remap configuration timer 4 channel 1 is pin pb6 and timer 4 channel 3 is pin pb8 both of these pins are on gpio b peripheral so bit iopben in apb2 enr register should be set so we can use gpio b peripheral RCC arrow operator APB2 ENR register bitwise or assignment RCC APB2 ENR IOPB EN set IOPB EN in APB2 ENR register to enable GPIO B peripheral clock pin PB8 should be in alternate function open drain mode it should never be in push pull mode because in push pull mode output pin is able to be connected to VCC and it should never happen to one wire bus pin pb8 is connected to sensor data pin and sensor and mcu can't be able to connect data pin to vcc pay attention in data sheet it says timer output pin should always be push pull but this is not that case here output pin has to be open drain so mode 8 should be 10 so we have output mode with max speed of 2 megahertz and cnf8 should be 11 so we have alternate function output open drain gpio b arrow operator crh register bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask gpio crh mode 8 here I cleared two bits of mode 8. In the next line, GPIO B arrow operator CRH register bitwise or assignment for setting bits. CNF8 should be 11. One, one. So all two bits should be set to 1. Here I write GPIO CRH CNF8. So I set two bits of CNF8. Mode 8 should be also 10. So bit 1 of mode 8 should be set. GPIO CRH mode 8 bit 1. Pin PB6 should be floating input. So mode 6 should be 0, 0. So we have input mode. And CNF6 should be 0, 1. So we have floating input. In GPIO B, CRL register. GPIO B, arrow operator, CRL register, bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask. GPIO CRL register, mode 6 or GPIO CRL register, CNF6. Mode is 0, 0 and CNF is 
01 GPIO B Arrow Operator CRL Register Bitwise or Assignment GPIO CRL CNF 6 bit 0 now cnf is 0 1 and mode is 0 0 gpio configuration is done now we go to timer 4 first we have to enable its clock bit timer 4 en should be set in apb1 enr register rcc arrow operator apb1 enr register bitwise or assignment rcc apb1 enr timer 4 en now timer 4 peripheral clock is enabled for timer 4 to be up counting CMS and direction bits should be cleared. In this line, I clear CMS and direction bits in CR1 register. To clear bits, you do bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask. Then I have to set bit OPM in CR1 register to enable one pulse mode. It means counter stops counting at the next update event. For this project, it means counter is going to count just one time. Timer 4 arrow operator CR1 register bitwise or assignment timer CR1 OPM bits should be set to 1 so one pulse mode is enabled. ARR has the maximum value and PSC is 71. Timer 4 arrow operator ARR register assignment cast it uint 16t and it's the maximum value timer for arrow operator psc register assignment uint 16t and the value is 71 next step is configuring channel 1 and channel 2 in input capture mode in timer 4 peripheral both channel 1 and channel 2 are connected to channel 1 input which is ti1 so CC1S should be 0, 01. It means CCR1 is connected to TI1. And CC2S should be 10. It means CCR2 is connected to TI1. CC1S and CC2S are in CCMR1 register. Here I write timer 4 CCMR1 register bitwise and assignment with not a bit mask. In this line, I want to clear bits CC1S and CC2S. In the next line, bit 0 of CC1S and bit 1 of CC2S are set. So CC1S is 0, 01 and CC2S is 10. In the next step, we have to configure we want capture to be done on falling or rising edges for channel. 1 and channel 2 of timer 4 CC1P in CCER register should be 1 because I want CCR1 to capture CNT value in falling edges so timer 4 arrow operator CCER register to set bit bitwise or assignment with bit mask timer CCER CC1P bit is set CC2P bit in CCER register should be cleared because I want CCR2 to capture CNT value in rising edges timer 4 arrow operator CCER bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask for clearing bit bit CC2P is cleared next step is configured timer for channel 3 in PWM mode this is PWM mode 1 and this is PWM mode 2 this is what I want in the start of each timer for period I want the low time and this is mode 2 and CCR 3 register should be 5000 because I want the load time to be 5 millisecond and 5 millisecond divided by 1 microsecond which is duration of each step 1 microsecond duration of each step 5 millisecond divided by 1 microsecond is 5000 timer 4 arrow operator CCR 3 register cast it 5000 Next step is enabling preload in CCMR2 register OC3P EBIT should be set to 1 So preload for channel 3 is enabled Timer for CCMR2 register bitwise or assignment for setting bit Timer CCMR2 OC3PE So preload for channel 3 is enabled Next step is configuring channel 3 in output mode So CC3S bit in CCMR2 register should be cleared. Timer 4 arrow operator CCMR2 register bitwise and assignment for clearing with not of bit mask. Bits CC3S are cleared. But when you're enabling preload for a channel, that channel could not be in output mode. So before enabling preload, I set all CC3S bits so it's not in output mode. Then I enable preload, then it's in output mode. 
for channel 3 to be in PWM mode 2 configuration OC3M bits in CCMR2 register should be set to 1 1 1 1 so we have PWM mode 2 configuration for channel 3 timer for arrow operator CCMR2 bitwise or assignment for setting bit timer CCMR2 OC3M all these 3 bits are set Next step is configuring polarity for channel 3 in CC 3P bit in CCER register. I don't want to invert it and it has to be active high. So CC 3P bit should be cleared. Timer 4 arrow operator CCER bitwise an assignment with not of bitmax to clear bit CC 3P. In this step, I'm gonna enable channel 1, 2, and 3 by setting bit CC1E, CC2E, and CC3E in CCER register. Timer for arrow operator CCER bitwise or assignment CC1E, CC2E, and CC3E bits are set. So channel 1, 2, and 3 are enabled. It's good to generate update in the next line. So all configurations are saved. Pay attention if you were using timer 1 or timer 8 which are advanced, bit MOE has to be set so you are able to use output channels. But I'm using timer 4 and this timer does not have a BDTR register. I want to use update interrupt and capture compare one interrupt in timer 4. So bit UIE and CC1IE should be set in DIER register. Timer 4 arrow operator DIER, UIE and CC1IE are set. Before enabling an interrupt, you have to clear its flag. So I have to clear UIF and CC1IF. Before enabling interrupt, I write Timer 4 arrow operator SR register. I do the assignment with not of bit mask. Why did I do this? Because this is how SR register work in timer peripheral. Next step is enabling these two interrupts in NVIC peripheral. Define a variable of type uint 32t, name it priority grouping, assignment, NVIC, get priority grouping, control space. I call this function, this function doesn't have any input argument. I save the result to pg variable. In the next line, I use the function NVIC set priority. First input is interrupt number. Timer 4 has one interrupt and its number is timer 4 IRQ number. To write the second input for this function, I use NVIC encode priority. First input of this function is PG variable. Second input is preemption priority. I put 3. Third input is sub priority. I put 0 because we don't have any bit for sub priority. Next step is using NVIC enable IRQ for enabling this interrupt in NVIC peripheral. This function has one input and that's interrupt number. Compile the code. Next step is writing callback functions for update interrupt and capture compare one interrupt. Before dht22 init, I write a function with return type of void dht22 capture compare one callback. Input argument is void. And another function for update callback. We specify these two functions as callback functions by writing their addresses in function pointer variables. Before enabling interrupt in NVIC peripheral, write x callback timer 4 this is a structure put dot after a structure and you can access it its members access cc1 this member is a function pointer variable and i store dht22 cc1 callback function address in this function pointer variable remember name of a function is address of that function in the next line i specify callback function for update interrupt here instead of cc1 write up up is a member of this structure and it's a function pointer variable i stored dht22 u callback function address in this function pointer variable in the next step i'm going to write this function capture compare one interrupt happens every time there is a falling edge on one wire bus in callback function of this interrupt we have to calculate the difference between ccr1 and ccr2 so we know the amount of time that bus was released and we figure out the corresponding bit value. If on time is 70 microsecond, bit is 1. If on time is 26 to 28 microsecond, bit is 0. I say if it's bigger than 50, bit is 1. Pay attention, CCR1 and CCR2 value unit is 1 microsecond because CNT clock period is 1 microsecond. In this function, I write if 
تایمر فور ارو اپریتور سی سی آر وان رجیستر ماینس تایمر فور ارو اپریتور سی سی آر تو اف دیس از بیگر دن 50 دن دی کارسپاندنگ بیت از وان I have to know whenever this function is called, what falling edge is responsible for calling it. So I define a variable here of type uint 8t, I name it dht22 loop. And every time this function is called, I do dht22 loop plus plus. This variable is incremented by 1 whenever this function is called. This is how we know which falling edge we're at. So how many falling edges are there? Pay attention before communication starts. Bus is one. Bus is pulled up. And after communication is finished, bus is pulled up also. So the number of falling edges and rising edges is equal. There is MCU start pulse. There is sensor start pulse. There are 40 bits. And there is an end pulse. And the sum is 43. There is 43 falling and 43 rising edges. There are 43 falling and 43 rising edges. MCU receives 40 bits every time the sampling is done. To store 40 bits, I define a variable of type uint 6040. I name it double D. In CC1 callback function, if difference between CCR1 and CCR2 is bigger than 50, it means the corresponding bit is 1, and we have to set that bit in DD variable. To set a bit, we do bitwise or assignment with bit mask. To make bit mask, we have to left shift 1 by amount of bit number. Before that, you have to cast 1. Its type has to be uint 6040. And bit number is 42 minus dht22 loop. Pay attention the first time falling edge happens and this function is called. When we are in this function, dht22 loop is zero. The second time this function is called and there is a falling edge, when we are in the function, dht22 loop is one. So the second time is one. The third time is two. The fourth time there is a falling edge, it's when most significant bit is received, bit 39. When we are in the fourth falling edge, the value of DHT22 loop variable is 3. For bit 39, bit mask is 1 left shift 39. And 39 is the bit number. The last bit that is going to be received is bit 0. And bit, bit, and bit mask for bit 0 is 1 left shift 0. We can make bit number which is 39 to 0 with this equation 42 minus DHT22 loop. When bit 39 is received, DHT22 loop is 3. 42 minus 3 is 39. And when bit 0 is received, DHT22 loop is 42 and 42 minus 42 is 0. Next step is writing update callback function. This interrupt happens at the end of every sampling. Here I have to calculate checksum which is sum of most significant 4 bytes. I define an array of type uint 8t with 5 members. Its name is bytes. Byte 0 assignment dd variable. Byte 1 assignment dd variable right shift 8 times. Byte 2 assignment right shift 16 times byte 3 assignment right shift 24 times and byte 4 is right shift 32 times byte 0 is the checksum that mcu received from sensor and sum of byte 1 to byte 4 is the checksum mcu has to calculate if sum of byte 1 to 4 is equal to byte 0 it means 40 bits are received successfully. Here I define a variable of type uint 8t. I name it cs checksum. Its value is sum of most significant 4 bytes. If cs equals bytes 0, it means calculated checksum and received checksum are equal. This is how MCU receives 40 bits. Least significant byte is checksum, after that is temperature, after that is humidity. To calculate temperature in degrees, you have to divide this 16 bit data by 10. And to calculate humidity in percent, you have to divide this 16 bit by 10. Here I define two float variables. This is wrong and you shouldn't do this because this is STM32F1 and float calculation here requires big functions. But this tutorial is not about that. 
and I define a variable name RH and another one named TMP. To extract humidity from the 64 bit variable, I have to right shift it 24 times. First, I cast it, it's U in 16T. Then, DD variable had to be right shift 24 times. Put this in parentheses, divide this by 10. After 10, put dot zero and an F after that. It means 10 is a float number. And then, semicolon. Cast this as float. To calculate TMP, you just have to right shift it 8 times. If checksum is not correct, I wanna write 0 to TMP and RH. There is a possibility here that for whatever reason, if DD variable is 0, then all bytes are 0 and CS is going to be equal to bytes 0. So I put this condition in parentheses, I do AND AND with CS. It means CS variable has to be not zero and it has to be equal to bytes zero to condition for this if to be true. Writing callback function is finished for now and next step is doing configuration for timer 3. Timer 3 is going to be responsible for a starting timer 4. First step is enabling timer 3 clock in APB1 ENR register by setting bit timer 3 EN. RCC arrow operator APB1 one ENR register bitwise or assignment timer RCC arrow operator APB one ENR register bitwise or assignment because we want to set bit I want to set bit timer 3 EN in APB one ENR register to enable timer 3 clock to have a up counting counter we have to clear bits CMS and direction in CR1 register Timer 3 arrow operator CR1 register for clearing bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask. Timer CR1 register direction bit and timer CR1 CMS bits. This slide is about calculating ARR and PSC registers value for timer 3. First, I have to decide values for two parameters CNT clock period and counter period. Then with these two formulas, I can calculate PSC and ARR. Counter period is 3 seconds. Because I'm using update interrupt and I want to interrupt every 3 seconds. And for CNT clock period, I choose 100 microseconds, which is more than enough resolution for this range. So if CNT clock period is 100 microsecond, with this formula, PSC register value is 7199. And with counter period 3 seconds, with this formula, ARR is 29999. Timer 3 arrow operator ARR register assignment UINT 16T 29000. 999 timer 3 arrow operator PST register assignment U in 16T 7199 to enable update interrupt I have to set bit UIE in DIER register timer 3 arrow operator DIER register bitwise or assignment for setting bit timer DIER UIE before enabling an interrupt, we have to clear its flag. Timer 3 arrow operator a status register assignment. When you want to clear a flag in a status register, you have to write not of bit mask in a status register. And the bit that I want to clear is timer a status register update interrupt flag. And before this, it's good practice to generate an update event timer 3 arrow operator EGR assignment timer EGR UG. Setting UG bit generates an update event. Update event causes values to be stored in registers with preload capability. Next step is enabling interrupt in NVIC peripheral. I use NVIC set priority to specify priority for timer 3 update interrupt. First input of this function is interrupt number. Timer 3 has just one interrupt. Its number is timer 3 IRQN. Second input of this function is priority. I make that with NVIC encode priority. For the first input, I write PG variable. This is priority grouping. For preemption priority, I write 2. I want a higher priority than this. And for sub priority, I write zero because we don't have any bit for sub priority. Next step is enabling interrupt by NVIC enable IRQ. This function has one input and its interrupt number. It's timer 3 IRQN. 
And the last thing is a starting timer three. It's timer three, arrow operator CR1, register, bitwise or assignment, timer CR1, CEN. By setting bit CEN in CR1 register, timer three starts counting. Next step is writing update callback function for timer three. Here I write a function with the return type of void. I name it DHT22, timer three, update, callback. Input argument is void. To set this function as callback function for timer tree update interrupt, we have to write its address to a function pointer variable. Here I write x callback timer tree. This is a structure. You put dot after it and you can access its members. I want to set function for update interrupt callback. I choose up. Then you put assignment and here you write the function name. Remember function name is its address. I write dht22 timer tree update callback function address to this function pointer variable timer 3 update interrupt happens every three seconds and in this function i'm going to start timer 4 so timer 4 does the measurement before i continue writing this function i want to add something to dht22 update callback which is update interrupt callback function for timer 4 at the end of this function add dht22 loop assignment 0 and also add dd assignment 0. Continue with writing function dht22 timer 3 update callback. At the start of this function, I want to disable update interrupt in timer 4 because I'm going to generate update event in this function and I don't want interrupt to happen. DIER bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask. Timer DIER UIE. I want to clear bit UIE in DIER register because I want to disable update interrupt. In the next line, I'm going to change CCR3 register. Cast it uint 16T. Channel 3 is responsible for sending MCU start pulse, which initiates measurement. And with value of 5 thousand for ccr3 we would have five millisecond load time on one wire bus ccr3 register has preload capability so values are not saved in this register unless an update event happens so i have to generate an update event timer for arrow operator egr register assignment timer egr ug by writing 1 to bit UG in EGR register, an update event is generated. Next step is enabling update interrupt. Remember I disabled update interrupt here because I wanted to generate an update event here. And I have to enable update interrupt again in this line. Timer for arrow operator DIER bitwise or assignment timer DIER UIE update interrupt enabled. Set bitwise or assignment with bit mask. I want to set bit UIE in DIER register. Next step is enabling timer for timer for CR1 register bitwise or assignment timer CR1 CEN bit. When you set CEN bit in CR1 register, timer starts counting. And the most important thing, you have to write zero to CCR3 register. CCR3 assignment zero. Each of these lines of code have a specific purpose. I want you to stop the code and think about the code that I wrote. Can you guess what I did? In above picture, you see PWM mode 2 when counter is up counting and polarity of output channel is not inverted, it's active high. And in this one, you see PWM mode 2 also when counter is up counting and output is active high and one pulse mode. One pulse mode means counter stops counting at the next update event. In this picture, counter starts counting here and the next update event is here. And counter stops counting at this update event. After counter stops counting, value of CNT register is zero. In PWM mode two, when CNT register is less than CCR, which is 5000, output is low. Here output is low because CNT is less than CCR, which is 5000. And when CNT is bigger than CCR or equal to CCR, CNT is bigger or equal to CCR, then output is high. This is the output channel in PWM mode 2 with 5 millisecond low time and 65.5 millisecond high time. This channel is 
is responsible for generating MCU start pulse. When one pulse mode is activated, after timer stops counting, CNT is zero, and zero is less than 5000. 5000 is value of CCR3. When one pulse mode is activated, after counter stops counting, here, channel output is going to be low because cnt is zero and cnt is less than ccr3 which is 5000 but this is not what i want i want to generate this pulse not this one I want to have a low time of 5 milliseconds every time timer 4 starts counting and this is the pulse that I want for the output of channel 3 of timer 4 not this one so how can I achieve this how can I get this solution to this problem is changing value of CCR3 to 0 when timer 4 stops counting if CCR3 is 0 so CNT is equal to CCR3 because CNT is also 0 so the output would be high and this is what I want I want timer 4 channel 3 output to be high after timer 4 stops counting so in the first cycle when timer 4 starts counting CCR3 should be 5000 because I want to generate the low time of 5 milliseconds but after timer 4 stops counting CCR3 should change to 0 this is the code that I wrote in DHT22 timer 3 update callback function. When I was writing, I forgot to write this line. I'm going to fix it later. After CEM bit in CR1 register of timer 4 is set in this line, timer 4 starts counting. And all of these lines are before timer 4 starts. In the first line, I deactivated update interrupt for timer 4. Because I have to generate an update in this line and I don't want an interrupt to happen because of that. In the second line, I change value of CCR3 to 5000 because I want to have a 5 millisecond low time pulse. Because CCR3 is preloaded, it means values that I write in this register doesn't save in it until an update event happens. So in the next line, I generate an update event, so value of 5000 is stored in CCR3 register. After you generate an update, update interrupt flag is set in a status register, so you have to clear it. In this line in a status register, I cleared update interrupt flag. In the next line, update interrupt is activated for timer 4. In the next line, timer starts counting by setting CEN bit in CR1 register. And CCR3 value is 5000. In the next line, value of CCR3 is changed to 0. But CCR3 value does not change right away because it is preloaded and its value is going to change in the next update event. And next update event is here. After next update event, value of CCR3 would be zero. And this is exactly what I want. In the first cycle, I want CCR3 to have value of 5000. And after an update event, I want its value to be zero. So channel three output in timer four is not low and it's high. Compile the code, write dht22 init function, declaration in dht22.h in main.c before while one, write dht22 init, compile the code, go to debug. In live expression view, you can see tmp and rh. Run the code, this is dht. 22 as you can see temperature is 26.3 and humidity is 42.2 percent it looks like sometimes we might not get the right data because their value is zero sometimes but i'm going to put that to test later here you can see if i do this Temperature is 26, 28 now and humidity is 99%. If I suck the air out, I can lower humidity and temperature. In DHT22.c, define two variables of type uint 32t. One is DHT total, another one DHT damage. In DHT22 update callback, 
At the end of this function, I increment DHT total by 1. I know this interrupt happens at the end of each measurement. And if calculated checksum does not equal the received checksum, it means the received data is damaged. In the else I write DHT damage, I increment this variable by 1. Compile the code and go to debug. In live expression, add DHT total and DHT damage. Run the code. As you can see, we are getting a lot of damaged data. Go to dht22.c. There is a line in this function that I forgot to write. And this is its place. Can you guess what that line is? Stop the code and think about it. Timer for arrow operator, SR register assignment, not of timer SR UIF. Before enabling an interrupt, you have to clear its flag, especially when you're generating update the line before that. Compile the code and go to debug. Run the code. As you can see, we have received five, six sampling and just one data is damaged. It's really good and predictable because it was the first data that was damaged and all data after that are received correctly. Temperature is 26.7 and humidity is 37.7%. If I do this, humidity is now 99.9% .9 and temperature is 28.8. I am going to do this project two more times, each time with less CPU load. Right click on DHT22, click copy, right click paste, I name it DHT22 V2. Right click on DHT22 and click close project. In DHT22 V2, click core, source, main.c. Click on project properties, CC++ general, pass and symbols. I have to correct these three include directories. Instead of DHT22, it should be DHT22v2. Apply and close. Right click on debug folder and click delete. Right click on DHT22debug.launch and click delete. Compile the project. There is no error and warning. In the second way that I'm going to do this project, first thing that is going to change is using union instead of shift operators. Union is a type of variable in C language which all of its members have the same address. Address of a thing is address of its first byte. In this example, address of first byte for three members of union are the same. In this slide, I'm talking about Indianness. It's about how things are stored in memory. Data is a 32-bit variable. It occupies four bytes. If least significant byte goes to lowest address, it's called little Indian. Lowest address is first address address and is address of data variable. It's address of the first byte that data variable occupies. Little Indian is how things are stored in our computer. Because union members have the same address, you use union when you want to access an address as different types. When bits are being received, I need a 64-bit variable to store 40 bits. This is 64-bit variable in memory. In the first row, you see imaginary addresses. Remember, first address belongs to least significant byte. And the last byte that received from sensor is going to store here. Bit number for the first bit that MCU receives is 39. And bit mask is one left shift 39. This is the first bit that MCU receives. For the last bit that MCU receives, bit number is 0 and bit mask is 1 left shift 0. This is the last bit that MCU receives. I also want to be able to access individual bytes 
to calculate and verify checksum. For this, I need an array of bytes. I named it byte with five members. Received checksum is byte zero. Calculated checksum is sum of byte one to four, and it should be equal to byte zero. I also want to have access to 16 bit of humidity and temperature, and this is their place in the 40 bits that are received by MCU. Least significant byte is checksum. After that, it's temperature and humidity. Last byte that is received is the byte with the lowest address. It's the least significant byte. It's checksum. After that, it's temperature and humidity. To extract these from the 40 bit, I define a structure. First member is a byte named CS, checksum. After that, 16 bit of temperature and 16 bit of humidity. But if I define a structure like this, there is going to be an empty byte in my structure. The reason is TMP variable type is uint 16t and its alignment is 2. It means it can just be stored in addresses that are dividable by 2. So it can't be stored here because 1 is not dividable by 2, but 2 is. So TMP is going to store here and RH in address 4. Solution for this problem is using attribute packed. You have to write it exactly like this after a struct keyword. Now compiler doesn't care about alignment of TMP and RH anymore. So I want to access one address as three different types. To store 40 bits, I want to access this address as a 64-bit variable. To calculate checksum, I want to access this address as an array of bytes that has five members. And to read temperature and humidity, I need to access this address as an struct named the result with one 8 bit named CS here is CS and two 16 bit temperature and humidity temperature and humidity this is why you use union when you want to access an address as different types here I'm accessing one address as three different types go to DHT 22 in it in DHT 22.c I write definition for a variable type named DHT type def DHT type def is a union with three members. Data which is 64 bit, byte is an array with five members of type uint 80, and result which is a structure with three members. With this new type, I define a variable named DHT data. Now instead of DD, I use DHT data. DHT data is a union. You put dot after union and you can access its members. Now I want to access this address as 64 bits. Next in DHT22 update callback function, to calculate checksum, I write DHT data dot. I want to access byte 1 plus byte 2 plus byte 3 plus byte 4. Now I don't need these lines and I don't need byte array. Here instead of byte 0, you write DHT data byte 0. Instead of doing the write shift 24 times for DD variable, I just write DHT data dot. Result is a structure, you put dot after it, you can access its members. I want to access 16 bit of humidity. I don't need to do any write shift anymore. Value is in memory and I can access it however I want. And I do this for the temperature also. Here instead of RH, I choose TMP. In the last line of this function, instead of write DHT data dot, I choose 64 bit type to access this address. Now delete definition of DD variable and compile the code. This was first step toward lowering CPU load. This is callback function for timer tree update interrupt. This interrupt happens every 3 seconds and this code starts timer 4. In the next step this function is going to be eliminated and there is no need for timer tree update interrupt anymore because timer tree is going to start timer 4 automatically. Timer 3 is master timer and timer 4 is a slave timer. Master timer sends TRGO, trigger output signal. Timer 3 update event is output trigger of timer 3. Timer 4 trigger input comes from timer 3. And this trigger starts counter in timer 4. So instead of having an interrupt in update event and in callback function starting timer 4, timer 3 is starting timer 4 automatically. Every time update event happens in timer 3, timer 4 starts counting. And timer 4 is in one pulse mode. It means when it reaches update event, it doesn't count anymore. There is another change from the previous project. Instead of using timer 4 channel 3 to generate a start pulse, I'm using timer 3 channel 1. This solves a lot of problems. 
I want to use timer 3 channel 1. We know remap configuration channel 1 is pin PR6, but I don't want to use that pin. I want to use pin PB4 for channel 1 of timer 3. So timer 3 remap bits should be 10 partial remap. In DHT22 init function, before doing timer 3 configurations, AFIO, arrow operator, map R register, bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask, AFIO, map R, timer 3, remap. I clear two bits, timer 3 remap bits in map R register in AFIO peripheral. To set partial remap configuration, these two bits should be 10. So in the next line, write AFIO, arrow operator, map R register, bitwise or assignment for setting bit, AFIO, map R, timer 3 remap. I want to set bit 1. So timer 3 remap bits are 1, 0. Pin PB4 is in alternate function open drain mode. Mode 4 has to be 1, 0. Output mode with max speed of 2 MHz and CNF4 has to be 1, 1. Alternate function output open drain mode. In GPIO BCRL register. In this line, I clear 2 bits of mode 4. And in this line, I set 2 bits of CNF4 and mode 4 bit 1. So CNF4 is 1-1 one, one and mode 4 is 1-0. Next step is configuring channel 1 in timer 3. CCR1 value is 5 millisecond, which is the duration of load time that I want, divided by 100 microsecond, which is duration of 1 step. CCR1 is 50. <coughs> Instead of writing configuration for channel 1 in timer 3, I can copy configuration from channel 3 in timer 4. Timer 4 channel 3 is not used anymore and I can cut this configuration from here and paste it here. Timer 3 CCR1 is 50. I have talked about this configuration before, I'm not gonna talk about it again. For a slave timer which is timer 4, we have to set in TS bits in SMCR register where the trigger is coming from. Internal trigger 0, 1, 2 and 3 means trigger is coming from another timer. In this example timer 4 is a slave timer and timer 3 is master. Internal trigger 2 and TS bit has to be 0, 1, 0. Go where timer 4 configuration is. Here is a start of timer 4 configuration. After writing ARR and PSC register values, here I write a slave. In this line, I cleared TS bits. To clear bits, you do bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask. And in this line, I set bit 1 of TS bits. So TS is 0, 1, 0. Now timer 4 is a slave and timer 3 is master. In a slave timer, which is timer 4 in SMS bits in SMCR register, I set what kind of effect I want this trigger to have on timer 4. I want trigger mode. In this mode, counter starts at rising edge of trigger input. And this is exactly what I want. I want every time timer 3 update event happens, which is master timer, timer 4, which is a slave timer, start to count. In this line, I cleared SMS bits in SMCR register. And in this line, I set bit 1 and bit 2 of SMS bits. So SMS is 110. In master timer, which is timer 3, in MMS bits in CR2 register, we set what is out Output trigger. If MMS bits are 0, 1, 0, update event is selected as trigger output. Go to timer 3 configuration. After setting ARR and PSC, I write timer 3 master. MMS bits are 1, 0 in CR2 register in timer 3. In this line, I cleared MMS bits and in this line, I set bit 1 of MMS bits. So now MMS is 1, 0. Timer 3 channel 1 is not activated yet. I write timer 3, arrow operator, CCR register, bitwise or assignment, timer, CCER, CC1. When I set bit CC1 in CCER register, channel 1 is activated. There is no need for update interrupt in timer 3, so I can delete these lines. This is enabling interrupt in DIER register. This is for callback function and this is enabling interrupt in NVIC peripheral. In timer 4 configuration, here there is no need for enabling channel 3 in timer 4. It's not used anymore. And in GPIO configuration, because pin PB8 is not used anymore, I can delete these lines. And DHT22 timer 3 update callback function is not used anymore. Compile the code, go to debug, start the code.
I let it work for a while. Every three seconds a sampling is done. So since 16 sampling is done and there is no damage data, temperature is 25.5 and humidity is 32%. If I do this, now humidity is 99.9% .9 and temperature is 27.3. If I suck the air, Now humidity is 61% and temperature is 25. 31 sampling has done and there is no damage data. To do the project for the third time, right click, copy, right click, paste, name it DHT22V3, right click on DHT22V2, click close project, open DHT22V3, click on core, source, main.c, click on project, properties, C, C++, general, pass and symbols. I have to correct these three directories. Instead of V2, it should be V3. Apply and close. Right click on DHT22v2 debug and click delete. Right click on debug folder and click delete. Compile the project. There is no error and warning. Right click on DHT22 init and open declaration. Now I'm in DHT22.c file. Unattainable goal is that peripheral do everything and there is no need for CPU after peripherals are initiated. As much as I can do, I have to make peripherals do the job, not CPU. And my next target is DHT22 capture compare one callback function. This interrupt happens at every falling edge on data pane, 43 times in less than 10 milliseconds in each sampling. And there is a sampling every three seconds. This is a bad interrupt to have. In this function, for for each bit difference between CCR1 and CCR2 is calculated. If it's bigger than 50, that bit is 1 and it's a store in DHT data dot data variable. Instead of reading CCR1 and CCR2 registers values in interrupt, two DMA channels can transfer these two registers values to two arrays in memory. And at the end of each measurement in DHT22 update callback function, I can calculate bit values for 40 bits it's in just one function. Before using any peripheral, you have to enable its clock. To enable DMA1 peripheral clock, you have to set bit DMA1EN in RCC AHPENR register. At the end of DHT22 init function, before enabling timer 3, here is a place to do DMA configuration. In this line, I set DMA1EN bit in AHPENR register in RCC peripheral. STM32F103 just has one DMA, it's DMA1. I have to figure out what channels I have to use from DMA1 request mapping. DMA1 has seven channels and each channel is connected to some requests from peripherals. Request from timer for channel 1 is connected to channel 1 and request from timer for channel 2 is connected to channel 4 of DMA. So channel 1 is going to transfer data from CCR1 register and channel 4 is going to transfer data from CCR2 register. Each DMA channel has a CPAR register, its peripheral address register. If you are not transferring data from memory to memory, then one side of transfer is peripheral. It doesn't matter you're reading from peripheral or you're writing to peripheral. You have to write peripheral address in CPAR register. The data that I want to transfer is content of CCR1 and CCR2 register. For DMA1 channel 1, value of CPAR register is address of timer 4 CCR1 register. And for DMA1 channel 4, CPAR register is address of timer 4 CCR2 register. Write DMA1 channel 1 arrow operator CPAR. Assignment 
address of timer for arrow operator CCR1. Compile the code. There is a warning in this line. It says it makes integer from pointer without the cast. This expression is a pointer. And here I'm writing a pointer in an unsigned 32 bit. So here I have to cast it. Its type is uint 32t. Compile again and there is no warning. For channel 4, here you write dma1 channel 4 and you write address of ccr2 register to cpar register of channel 4. Next step is configuring cmar register. This is memory address. In this case, two dma channels are going to transfer content of ccr1 and ccr2 register of timer 4 to somewhere in memory. In CMA register, we have to configure where in memory data is being transferred to. Go at the top of this file. Here, I'm going to define three arrays of type uint 16t. I'm named the first one CCR1 with 43 members. Next, CCR2 with 43 members. And one array named diff with 43 members. Then write DMA1, channel 1, arrow operator, CMA register, assignment, casted is uint 32t. I want value of CCR1 register transfer to an array named CCR1 that I just defined. Remember, name of an array is address of that array. And for channel 4, you write DMA1 channel 4 CMA register. I want content of CCR2 to be transferred to CCR2 array. Each DMA channel has a configuration register. It's called CCR. We have to configure CCR register for channel 1 and 4. For both channels, memory to memory is disabled because I am reading from peripheral. For both channels, priority is not important in this project. So I put PL bits to 00, zero so it's low. M size is the size of data that is being read from memory or write to memory. In this case, M size is the size of data that is being written to CCR1 and CCR2 arrays. And it's 16 bits. So M size should be 01 for both channels. P size is peripheral size. It's a size of data that is being read from or it's being written to peripheral registers. In this case, it's the size of data that is being read from CCR1 and CCR2 registers in timer 4. And it's 16 bits. P size should be 0, 01. Mink bit should be set to 1 for both channels. It means memory increment enabled. Every time DMA writes something to memory, CCR1 or CCR2 array, the next time you don't want DMA to overwrite the previous data. So memory address has to be incremented every time DMA transfers the data. But pink bit for both channels should be cleared because you don't want peripheral address to increment. Always you want to read from CCR1 and CCR2. Circular mode is disabled for both channel DIR bit is zero because I am reading from peripheral reading from timer 4 CCR1 and CCR2 registers. All three interrupts are disabled and when you want to enable channel you have to set EN bit in CCR register. In first step I clear all bits in CCR register for channel 1 and for channel 4. For both channels P size and M size are 0 1 so bit 0 of M size and P size has to be set and because memory increment has to be enabled, mink bit is also set. Channel 4 configuration is the same. Before I enable channel 1 and channel 4 of DMA1, I have to set number of data to transfer for each channel in their CNDTR register. For number of transfer for channel 1 and channel 4, I put 44. And next step is enabling channel 1 and channel 4 of DMA1 by setting EN bit in CCR register. Then go to timer for configuration. Here I have to enable DMA request for channel 1 and channel 2. This is done by setting bit CC1DE and bit CC2DE in DIER register. And there is no need for capture compare 1 interrupt and it shouldn't be enabled in this line. And there is no capture compare 1 callback function. Now we can delete DHT22 capture compare 1 callback function. In DHT22 update callback function, first you have to disable channel 1 and channel 4 of DMA1 by clearing EN bit in CCR register. Next, write for uint 8t, i assignment 0, do the loop till i is less than 42. 
at the end of the loop increment i by 1. I defined three arrays with members of type uint 16t with 43 members. I write the equation here diff assignment ccr1 minus ccr2. For 40 bits difference between ccr1 and ccr2 has to be calculated and based on value of the difference you figure out if that bit is 1 or 0. If bit is 1, you have to set that bit in amdata.data variable. You do bitwise or assignment, then you cast it, you int 64t, 1, left shift, a number, minus i. I don't want to explain to you why indexes for this array are the way they are, or why the value that is being written here is what it is. So I give you the time to think about what these values should be. Stop the code and think about it. At the end of this function, write the value of 44 in CNDTR register for channel 1 and channel 4 of DMA1. Remember, when you're writing to CNDTR register, DMA channel has to be disabled. In next step, you enable channel 1 and channel 4 of DMA1. Compile the code. There are two errors. AD data should be DHT data. Compile the code. There is no error and warning. Compile the code and go to debug. In live expression view, add CCR1 array and CCR2 array and diff array. Run the code. Every three seconds the sampling is done. Now seven sampling is done. There is no damaged data. Humidity is 37.0% and, and temperature is 22. If I do this, now temperature is 23 and humidity is 99.9% 14 sampling. If I suck the air out, I can lower humidity and temperature. And now humidity is 55 and temperature is 22. 24 sampling is done and there is no damage data. In the third part of this video, I used two DMA channel. DMA1 channel 1 transfer data from timer 4 CCR1 register to CCR1 array. These are values of timer 4 CNT register whenever a falling edge happen on data pin. DMA1 channel 4 transfer data from timer 4 CCR2 register to CCR2 array. These are values of timer 4 CNT register whenever a rising edge happens. Diff array is the difference between rising and falling edges. This is value of on time for each bit. First on time is for MCU start pulse. Second one is for sensor start pulse. And from the third one, it's the 40 bits. If value of on time for a bit is 26 to 28, like this one's bit value is zero. If on time is 70 microsecond, like this one's, bit value is 1.
This was interfacing DHT22 with SDM32 with two timer and two DMA channel. The only CPU load is this function. And this function is called at the end of each measurement. Every three seconds this function is called. And during communication to DHT22, CPU has no job. Ninety-five sampling is done and there is no damage data.